Barry was very anxious to get a new lab partner. So he was very talkative and couldn't wait to show me different things. And it was in the demonstration of the reactor working where it caught my attention to where this is technology that doesn't even exist. So, I mean, that was the first time I knew that this is really something different. What was it? What was it? What was a what was it about this reactor that made you think that it didn't exist technologically? Well, it was the I actually have to back up because there were some briefings that I read it before that that um, you know, certainly gave me the impression that this was going to be a weird job, but this was the first hands-on thing. Uh, this was a small reactor about the size of a hemisphere, about the size of a basketball, on a metal plate. And when it was running, it produced a gravitational field, a gravitational field of its own. Now, this is something that we can't do. We can't produce any gravity. The only way we get gravity is from large quantities of mass. But there's no machine we can have that turns on that makes gravity like a uh, you know, you can turn on an electromagnet and it makes a magnetic field. We can't make a gravitational field. Anyway, this device was producing that. And Barry said, almost like he was bragging, go ahead, try and try and touch the sphere. And I, I couldn't. It, it pushed my hands away, just like two light poles of a magnet. So that was... Uh, so like when you take two magnets and you're trying to press them together and they yeah, push you have against that, each other? Yeah, that kind of <coughs> cushion feeling, but you can't you can't get them together. The closer you put them, the more they push. But and you felt that physically with, with my your hand. hand. Yeah. Now there's nothing there's nothing that does that, and that immediately caught my attention. Going, wow, this is something else. What was your thought like when you felt that and you knew that there was nothing that you were aware of that could produce then that this? that connected me to the briefings that I read on the the first day at S four was that uh, you know. Everything that I had read was apparently accurate. And what were you reading? I read, it was kind of an overview. This project was to back engineer the alien craft. And specifically, it was to try and back engineer and see if we can duplicate the technology with available materials. Now, to do this, they split the project into you know, many different pieces for several reasons. They, they do this on all classified projects. So uh, nobody has the complete story, but uh, they compartmentalize everything. Now, we had the power and propulsion system. So what the briefings they gave me were like a one or two page overview of some of the other projects that were going on, you know, on the craft. The only reason they do that is just in case what you're working on is connected intimately in some way that we don't know of to one of the other projects. You have to know their, <clears throat> excuse me, their existence. So um, you know, I, but the, again, they have everything from metallurgy to, um, you know, weapon potential, the craft, and these were all, you know, essentially very short briefings, but mine was just power and propulsion. And it made it very clear that what I read was accurate. So when you were reading that before you actually saw the reactor, what were your thoughts on what they were describing? If you well, knew thought, that something like that didn't exist, and they're describing it in the briefings, what did you think you were going to see? I really, I, I didn't know at the time. I mean, I was reading, I thought, is this just some kind of test? Um, see if you're crazy? Well, not to see if I'm crazy. To uh, You know, a lot of times they'll take in real high security uh, jobs. I mean, they'll intentionally insert nonsense into them. Um, whether it's to confuse the fact or if for someone was to leak it out, uh, they would carry that information along and know where it came from. So I read through the documents, but, you know, I didn't know if this was, you know, part of some kind of test or, right. um, you know, or, or what, or was it potentially realistic? I mean, I really didn't consider it being <laughs> all that possible as far as being uh the actual thing that I was going to work on at the time. How did they turn it on? The the reactor? Yeah. The reactor can be turned on or turned off in a lot of different ways. Um, the way Barry showed me, it, the hemisphere is removed. There's a small tower in the middle. When you put the hemisphere on, the reactor activates. The reactor shuts down. It's, it's load sensing. So if there's, if there's no load on the reactor at all, it shuts down. When there's a, a load present on it, it starts up again. Load meaning? 
uh, you, you can consider it an electrical load. So although it doesn't necessarily operate electrically, there's no wiring that connects any of the subcomponents together whatsoever. They just have to be in the immediate vicinity. It's, uh, it is, but the stuff is borderline magic. And that's essentially where we left it, you know, when I left the project. So there was no progress made? There was some progress. I mean, we did identify, at least we think, some processes and and had a rough idea, we think, of what was going on. But um, I think this is a problem that they've had for a long time. And, um, you know, I was replacing somebody that Barry worked with prior to me. And I think there was some horrific accident that I didn't have a whole lot of information on. But, you know, Barry alluded to that. A horrific accident, like where someone died? or Yeah, where somebody died. Because they were trying to tamper with things or figure out how something worked? Yeah, the reactor in particular. But yet he let you touch it. Yeah, I think what they were trying to do was cut into one. Oh, now, they had, they had more than one there. And I, that was supposedly there was an unannounced nuclear test. And that's what it was. At the time, remember, they were still doing underground nuclear tests at the test site. Um, but from what I understand, according to Barry... There was an attempt made. Now, this must have been a pretty desperate attempt because it's not a very scientific process to cut, you know, analyze something that way. But it looked like they used a plasma cutter or something like that to cut into an, ex an operating reactor. How many of these things did they have? They had nine, nine craft altogether. I only got hands-on with one of them, so I can't really say what the, uh, how the others operated. Did but you see the other ones? Yeah. At one time, and only one time, the bay doors that between the hangars were all open, and I could see all the way through. And were they all exactly the same? No, they were all different. Different shapes? Yeah. But they were all from somewhere else? Yeah, absolutely. Now, did anyone make any attempt to explain or to to tell you where they came from? No, no. No one is the least bit interested in letting everybody know all the facts. They want to give you the minimum information that's necessary to complete your task. So you're not getting the story of where they came from. You're not getting the story of what, how much progress other people are making. You 